According to the general public's eyes, Batman is a cool, dark loner with issues and a butler. In recent movies, like the Batman with Robert Pattinson, he made him goth, he made him emo, he made him relatable to everyone that is in their 20s. And then with the Snyder version of Batman with Ben Affleck, he made him more relatable to grown adults. And then the Dark Knight made him appeal to more edgy people in general, you know, it's not a young, hip, goth look or the more gravelly grown man look. It's more of the more suave American psycho audience that Christian Bell captured. And arguably those three depictions of Batman permeate the general public's consensus on what the character is. He's seen as a loner. And yet ever since Robin's introduction in 1940, Batman and Bruce Wayne, the man behind the mask, has been more than that. He's been a friend to many, he's been a mentor, and most importantly, he has been a dad. And now I know that Batman becoming a dad was a big marketing ploy, it was a way to target younger audiences by having a young relatable character, of course it will make more younger audiences and parents be more willing to engage with this sort of media. Especially when this character is alongside Batman fighting crime. I mean it's just like anime, make them young, make them relatable, then you can easily self insert. But why did DC think they could put it off with this character? This character who, again in mainstream, is seen as a loner even in the comics now it's a whole thing in the beginning and certain periods of Batman's runs and certain periods of Batman's animated adaptations he's been campy he's been cool he's been funny but the vast majority of ways that people see Batman is dark is lonely but then why did they decide to give him a child I mean they could have left him as Punisher while having the other equally as successful if not sometimes more successful heroes aka Superman have their own sidekicks instead what makes Bruce Wayne specifically qualify for fatherhood why was Bruce Wayne destined to be a dad well that, my friends, is the question I'm going to be answering in this video. And if you have any time after this, you know, or during whatever, check out my description down below. There might be something fun for you to do down there. So, this time, uh, we're gonna be looking a little bit into Bruce Wayne's psyche today. So, strap yourself in and get ready. This is somewhat subjective, but also as unbiased as I can make it because I don't want to give him too much of the benefit of the doubt. So, I'm gonna be quite realistic with this assessment. Let me start off by saying that for all Batman's merits, for all Bruce Wayne's merits, because that's more so who we're going to be talking about today, is not the most mentally stable individual. And by that, I mean that Alfred probably has at least 15 therapists on speed dial, and if I was, uh... <laughs> considering doing therapy then I think I would use him as motivation in the back of my mind you don't want to become like Bruce Wayne you don't want to become like Bruce Wayne he's that bad if I was DC I wouldn't think you know this is the guy I'm gonna be going to to give a child so why would DC give him children children first sidekicks second in comparison to other heroes who oftentimes have sidekicks first friends and mentees and children second. Well, Bruce Wayne has major mental health problems despite only being in his 20s. He has a lot of childhood trauma, he has a lot of loneliness, extreme workaholism, he is emotionally repressed and he is depressed. And these problems may only be able to be solved by having people around him. This is supported by numerous studies. For one, Alan et al ran an analysis of over 85,000 participants with a mean age of 50 Five, who were enrolled in UK Biobank, which is this biomedical database. They found that childhood trauma can increase the tendency of adult social exclusion. So him being traumatized as a child, blam, the gun, shots, the pearl, necklace, the blood, Batman, has been shown to significantly impact the tendency that people like him would be secluded socially as adults. A follow-up longitudinal study by Hernandez et al looked at 92 graduate students over the course of nine months. They found that loneliness led to higher stress levels and that this relationship was mediated by workaholism. And by mediated, think some guy at a debating table. There's loneliness and there's higher stress. Loneliness is trying to drag up higher stress and bring it up. You know, you're lonely, you're gonna be 
higher you're gonna be elevated and workaholism is this guy at the table who's mediating them and working between them essentially the more lonely these students are the more stressed they are and this relationship depends on whether the person is a workaholic or not last but not least erizen and sigriki so sorry about that pronunciation so sorry about the pronunciation ran a meta-analysis study on 88 studies which were studying <laughs> the effect of loneliness on depression among the results gathered from over 40,000 participants they found that loneliness significantly affected depression meaning that of course the more lonely you were the more depressed you were these cohorts so graduate students and people with childhood trauma were specific specifically chosen because they reflected what Bruce prior to having children had the characteristics he had the, the high stress the high loneliness their workaholism or even just being similar ages to him treating Bruce as an actual individual with thoughts and feelings and not just some character that some guy made up the research suggests that Bruce had childhood trauma which caused his isolation which caused his loneliness and his loneliness was the source of a lot of things like high stress like workaholism like depression for instance so then how could DC heal him enough to make him a dad by sending him to a spa and making him put his feet up and giving him the personalized therapy we all know he deserves <sighs> no. instead what DC did to make it so that he could be a dad and that it made sense that he should be the dad well they gave him meaningful personal close intense social relationships to inadvertently deal with the loneliness and the isolation that was causing a lot of his personal mental health problems but the problem is that even his personal close social relationships are fractured ones so he does have social relationships with equals for one which arguably are the most important he has a romantic one that i'm going to talk about and a more platonic one so in terms of the romantic one selena you know she's his main romantic interest we have talia al Ghul as a secondary but she is definitely yes yeah, selena is definitely up there at the very top of course and i mean i don't even have to talk about the wedding to talk about how fractured their relationship is and to talk about how them never really settling down together and never being allowed to settle down together and the fact that she doesn't really get him fully she's not the same as him she doesn't have that same issues with emotional oppression and she doesn't have the same drive to save people that he does she's always been quite independent and never really allowed herself to be weighed down by anything and so there's many arguments why she was kind of flighty sometimes and those are some of them she can never really be the social relationship that allows him to heal be the social relationship that fully takes away his loneliness because she doesn't stay and then clark is a similar thing and completely different at the same time they're both equals again in that relationship but of course without all of the romance it's instead more of a brotherly bond you know clark is somebody who also lost his entire life when he was very young even younger than bruce way younger than bruce and he is a stranger in a sense a stranger to a world that's not his and yet he's made it his and that everybody's accepted him as theirs so he gets the whole idea of having a role to play that's larger than him and he somehow understands and has the patience for bruce even though he doesn't have the same issues as bruce but again clark has a life he has something else to do he has other people to see he has a, a partner no, he has a city that he focuses on super villains he cannot always be there for bruce and he should never be always there like selena can't fix your boyfriend or whatever he can't, can't fix his friend it's not his role they're not professional licensed or anything and so the relationship while i wouldn't say it is as fractured i would definitely say that because of bruce not being used to that kind of contact he struggles to often let clark in and so no matter how much clark wants to start building stuff with bruce and that they have built something a lot of the time bruce doesn't feel like he can fall back on it he at the very least sees it as a fractured one neither of these equal relationships help with the emotional repression as they should i mean he should be practicing communicating everything he feels with them you know that should have been the space where he would feel comfortable with doing that and yet bruce doesn't he's often distant from both of them and that's a problem because where else but your friends and the woman you love are you really supposed to fully express everything that you are emotionally and then jim gordon tackles a different part of his 
psyche, which is incredibly important. A different part of his mental problems and mental health issues that is incredibly important. And that's the workaholism, that's the stress. So Jim is kind of an equal and kind of an authority figure for Bruce. Contrary to the other people, he has a certain level of mentorship over Bruce, as well as a friendliness with Bruce. I know in different iterations in the beginning, a lot of iterations perhaps, Jim is seen, you know, teaching Bruce certain things about detective work, teaching him about how the cops work. He's an ally, but somebody who knows more, who, who has the grounds to actually tell him more while also being close with him. And that is a special bond. That's a super special bond. But a lot of the time, it's only really with Batman. I mean, a lot of the time, what am I talking about? So if you're only really seeing that equal, that friend through your work kind of outfit, work attire, it's hard to really get into it and to really start to tackle your issues with work you know your issues with workaholism your issues with stress when the only person who potentially could help you with that has similar issues encourages your bad behavior and encourages your problems you know it's a complicated one and it's sad because i would say that because of how distant they are he's never decaled really in front of gordon their relationship can never really fully heal bruce's issues with work and issues with workaholism because you know neither of them are good workers they in, in fact they kind of encouraged each other to do too much and so much for the city that jim instead allows him to spiral in a way i mean i think there's sometimes where he's like ah oh, you should you know give it a second or relax or something but usually they're just partners in policing not crime and last but not least not an equal and an authority figure but just an authority figure alfred he is definitely before any of bruce's kids the primary social relationship for bruce he's the one who lives with him he's the one who takes care of him and he is the absolute authority figure it's not really an equal relationship <laughs> in that sense he brought bruce up he taught him a lot and he watches over him and treats him like his child even though he does also respect Bruce a very very big amount of course. Alfred's role I don't think would be about the workaholism because uh, he's very lenient he kind of has struggles to say no to Bruce a lot of the time and again it's also not the emotionally repressed side it wouldn't be the depression because you don't really always communicate everything you feel with your parents I mean often I don't you know everyone has things they, they want to keep to themselves the best place I would say arguably to really express yourself is with your equals unless you want advice of course and so with that rhetoric in mind i believe that alfred's big role in helping bruce mentally and alleviating both the loneliness and his other subsequent issues would be helping bruce work through his childhood trauma you know working through what happened and how that affects him and how that makes him isolate himself in the first place the root cause of the problem that's what alfred could help with however there are different iterations and it's too inconsistent and I think that is the major problem for their fractured relationship because we have the iteration of Alfred who is in the Caped Crusader who is essentially his actual butler like I know we say he's his butler and it, he is his butler but it's always like oh, he's his butler but he's also his dad you know it's like he's also his guardian he's also his advisor like it, it's never really just butler but in the Caped Crusader if anybody have seen it he literally is his butler and it's really nasty and creepy and weird and he calls him Pennyworth and it's distant and it's just odd to me and other iterations in comparison show where Bruce is just in his mother's basement in a sense Alfred is the mum Bruce is the child and that way he is super indulgent and he is all up in his business but also giving him tea and crumpets and just facilitating or enabling him which is fine we're living in a comic book world I don't really like it when people put too realism like i'm even now i can't treat him completely like a real person but putting some realism in there you know a good amount of realism alfred yeah is definitely enabling him so i would say in both of those times where he's very distant and he has no real command over bruce compared to when he's in his mom's basement and he has a lot of command over him and a lot of influence over him i would say that their relationships are both fractured and even the fact that both exist at the same time in different runs are also both fractured sometimes alfred would be very involved in a certain case or a certain thing he'll step in and then sometimes he'll step back out and all of these inconsistent things i feel give bruce this kind of inability to really confront anything you know alfred's never really tried to encourage him to confront anything too much especially with himself i mean he does sometimes you know if something big has happened say hey hold on you need to really think about this it's obvious as a child that alfred never really was close enough for him he never gave him the emotion 
emotional stability and the ability to grieve and helped him work through his grief well enough otherwise Bruce would not be like this you know at the end of the day he would be more adjusted he would be more reliant on Alfred he would be more trusting but all of this tension all of this being wound up inside a lot of it has to go to Alfred not really tackling the childhood trauma when it happened and that is just that is a problem and I think that that is a cause of their fractured relationships I think from the beginning Alfred wanted to keep them distant a little bit and that just ruined a lot of the potential of healing that Bruce's character could have undergone from a young age so ignoring the idea of therapy even his social relationships can help Bruce heal but they cannot alone put him on the path of healing only he himself can do that and he will never do that by himself i mean as a 20 something his path of healing was to dress up as a bat and go save people and you know that's not maybe the most adjusted way of doing things so then what would make bruce take action and own you know his healing start up his healing process what would be the main reason that dc could argue that this loner would plausibly have kids by sending him to therapy nah i'm joking it's far Fatherhood itself. Fatherhood itself is what healed Bruce Wayne enough to have children, is the reason why he is destined to have children because becoming a father prompted him to take an active role in his own healing and therefore helping his kids to heal. Dick Grayson is going to be my primary example in this part of the video because he's obviously the most similar, he's been there for the longest, he's just the easiest to explain and he is the first kid to help Bruce and make him into a father so it's who I'm going to be using. How did fatherhood change Bruce for the better? How did fatherhood prompt Bruce to take an active role? Well firstly by making Bruce have a new perspective on life you know when bruce starts to bring dick in starts to see exactly almost bar for bar in a sense what happened to him when he was a nine-year-old eight-year-old whatever year it is forces bruce to take a new perspective it forces him to look at what dick's life could be what dick's life is going to be and how he could change dick's life and therefore reflect on his own life and how his life ended up and you know the first step to healing is acknowledgement the second reason why Bruce takes an active role in his own healing by being a father is because he has to teach Dick. You know, he has to teach Dick to communicate, he has to teach Dick to fight, he has to teach Dick to study, he has to teach Dick to smile again, to grieve, to do all of these things. And by teaching Dick, he's teaching himself. You know, they say that when you study and when you're trying to revise, you should teach other people in your peer group what you need to learn because it allows you to remember. Well, by teaching Dick all of these things, I honestly think that it did change Bruce for the better. It made him learn learn again what he should have been learning when he was a child, what maybe Alfred wasn't able to teach him, what maybe potential therapists couldn't get through to him, what maybe he might not even know when he was a very young child and what he needed to know in preparation for dealing with grief. Just a lot of things you teach children that you don't really think about that you would ever need because usually you'd assume parents are adjusted. Why would, when I'm teaching my child about how to, I don't know, tie his shoelaces, I know how to tie my shoelaces of course. But in this case, Bruce doesn't know how to tie his own shoelaces. So when he teaches Dick how to tie his own shoelaces, he's like, oh, that's how you tie your own shoelaces. <laughs> now I know. And so they learn together. And that is honestly a beautiful thing. Another reason why Bruce takes an active role in his own healing when he becomes a father is because Dick and him heal together. So they're not the same as Clark and Selina, who are his equals, who don't have the same emotional issues as Bruce does, who don't have that same grief, that same level of despair that Bruce does. And now Dick also does. They don't really get it, but Dick does. You know, Dick understands. So whenever Dick needs to heal, whenever Dick has a nightmare or something like that, it's not actually a fanon thing, by the way, that's canon. Like, he... Bruce will comfort Dick after a nightmare. You know, Bruce will help Dick to heal. And then when Bruce is comforting Dick, he's also inadvertently comforting himself. And you know, when Dick is smiling at Bruce, Bruce is also smiling back at Dick because they are helping each other. You know, Bruce is on the process of healing still with Dick. He's never healed. It's, it's a wound that's open, that's never closed. And so as he helps Dick to heal, the idea is that slowly but surely that wound is closing. It's never 
gonna close because how could it how would he be batman then but i argue that they heal together better than bruce will heal by himself or with any of his other social relationships last but not least the reason why bruce starts to take an active role in his own healing is that contrary to jim and alfred dick needs bruce to be functional so that he can live so that he can survive and bruce has always been a man who has been motivated by selfless means selfless reason dick is a child dick needs someone capable but he also needs someone functional you know if bruce was always breaking down always crying always angry always losing it how then could bruce also help dick from falling down that rabbit hole as well exactly he couldn't and so that is a big motivation as well to allow him to force him to want to heal that's why fatherhood heals bruce Wayne's character enough for him to realistically be able to take on a child that's why bruce wayne was destined to be a dad it's a cyclical structure fatherhood heals him he becomes a dad he becomes a dad because fatherhood heals him this is the answer right or is it you're not equal to your child but sometimes bruce sees his child or his children as equal sometimes he needs them to be sane for him to be okay he needs them to be functional so he can survive read tim after jason passes away you need a robin you know and that is an instance where i feel that perhaps fatherhood doesn't heal him enough for him to be a dad compared to most sidekicks who are not as close bruce sees his children day and night 24 hours 24 hours all the time for a long period of time for all of his children and that only emphasizes this dependency issue that's why although i still do think that bruce is destined to be a father everything points towards the idea that if dc really wants him to be adjusted enough without therapy <laughs> to fulfill this role to be a dad they should have made his social relationships like i was talking about before more functional they should have healed those relationships they should have made them stable and even given him a significant other selena you know selena kyle should be his wife but then again, I mean, where's the, all the angst if, if Bruce Wayne is a functional character, functional human being? They don't care. So, what, I mean, what am I going to do? And that's why Bruce Wayne is destined to be a dad, but should also be a friend and a lover too. If you want to do one thing, subscribe. Uh, 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 you. Otherwise, check out my other videos and you can let me know if you agree or not in the comments. So we can have a chat about this topic. Let's take a quick goodbye, Jan Yong. I think Bruce needs people. I can't lie to you. I can't lie to you. And that they know that he needs them and he would benefit from them. But their relationships and circumstances just don't work. So a lot of his relationships just don't completely function like they should. Because if they did, he'd be a much more functional person. But that's boring because DC wants to make conflict out of personal stupid issues where Bruce optimizes his son. I'm never going to get over that. And I'm so angry that they wrote that for his character because I love him. I, why, would, why would you make this little guy? Why would you make him do that? Conclusion. I hate detective comics but i do love that man what to do what to do also the bruce is a bad parent tag i hate you all my homies hate you all my homies hate you all my homies hate you <laughs> hey i said he's destined to be a dad i never said he's destined to be a good dad but i do think he's a good dad okay that's all i'm saying that's all i'm saying i'm trying to be biased